Hello, I'm Greg, and it's time for another Tunnel Take. Yeah, um, yeah, let me, I've been, I've been talking to Scott, Tramper Scott, about, um, uh, Tongue Bite, and, um, I tried an experiment last night. It's a, it's a theory I've had for some time, but I've never really tested the thing on a, on a small scale, you know, and that's how... That's how proper science is done, y'all. You know, all this stuff that you see that's in our media and all this stuff, most of this stuff is crap, is theory. A bunch of theories thrown up in the air and people want to attach themselves to a theory. It is not a scientist scientific experiment if it's, if it's just something you made up in your mind. You see something in nature, maybe, and you want to know how it works? Find a way of testing that on a very small scale. So anyway, uh, we were talking about tongue bite. And, um, and, uh, um, and I was watching, um, the Pipe Cottage. Uh, maybe in the last video, we were talking about some tobacco they liked. And uh, he mentioned Arrowhead. I said, I got some Arrowhead. Arrowhead's good tobacco. Somebody, I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was Donnie um, Hillbilly Piper or it may have been uh, Michigan Piper. Um, Doug, I'm not sure. But I remember standing beside somebody at the uh, Ohio Pipe Show two, through two or three years ago. And they said, Greg, you like aromatics. Get you some of the Arrowhead right here. And I picked up, I picked up some. And, um, and that stuff is some good stuff. Anyway, uh, the guy on Pipe Codge, I, I don't know his name. I, don't, I can't say I forgot it because I don't know I ever knew it. But um, if you know his name, put it in the, script, in the, uh, in the comments. That, that'll help me out. Um, and he was talking about Arrowhead. And I said, I got some. I'm going to smoke some. I got smoking that stuff. I said, man, I can puff the daylight side of this stuff and it doesn't bite you. So right then I said, okay, all right, I got a tobacco that doesn't bite you. All right, my little theory on biting tobacco is that the companies are rehydrating tobacco after after they stove it or whatever. It's, it's crunchy, dry, you know, you have to rehydrate it. My theory was that they were using city water to rehydrate that stuff with a lot of chlorine in it. And the chlorine would, um, would uh, or, no, well, the moisture would dissipate and get down to a moisture level that they were satisfied with packing it, and but but the but the chlorine molecules were still attached to the tobacco, and I was thinking, well, maybe that's what's giving us a, a, a tongue bite. So anyway, so I took about half of a half ounce jar, no, not a half ounce jar, um, uh, a half pint jar. I think it's, I think they're half pints. So one's about this tall. Took half a jar and, and and just soaked it right into some city water, you know. That was yesterday. And um and got a little strainer with a real fine mesh strainer, you know. Strain it all out and uh and just sit it on a paper towel and just let it sit there. The biggest thing was was not don't do it or dabbing it off because a lot of the water will come a lot of the water with its chlorine and all the rest of it will come off on the paper towel. You don't want to do that. You just want the, the, the H2O to evaporate and leave everything else on there from that city water. And here in Greenville, when you drink city water in Greenville, you're drinking pool water, y'all. Good golly. You know, chlorine's a cell killer. Chlorine will kill cells. And it's, you know, if you can not drink chlorine water, that, that would probably be better for you, you know. Anyway, so, and it dried out overnight, and um, and a while ago, I saw it up there on my desk, I said, well, I'm going to try this thing. So, I packed two pipes, and um, and I've been smoking them, you know, because I didn't even have to do that, really, because the one that, 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 I, that I soaked in, um, in uh, city water, it was on this one here, and it bites, and 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 the and the, the the arrowhead that was fresh out of dr jar, you know, when, when I when I when I packed that one with the uh, with the uh, arrowhead tobacco that was sitting out that soaked in city water, 
I packed them at the same time and smoked and got, got both of them going, you know. And um, I can puff the daylights out of this right here, and it doesn't bite at all. Uh, do you or do yourself the, the experiment? I mean, it doesn't take, it's not much, that's not a big a deal to do it, you know. You know, uh, don't rely on people telling you what something is. Because most of the time, they're just operating off of some crap they heard some other guy say. That's why I don't even read reviews. I don't want to regurgitate crap that somebody else said about this tobacco. Nah. What is that? What is that? That ain't nothing. Anyway. No bite at all with this stuff. Unreal. And a good aromatic. Arrowhead. Now, um, the Lane Berry Cherry that I love, you guys know I love this stuff, but I haven't smoked any of that in a couple of years now. The first two pounds I bought that stuff, oh, it was fabulous. Oh, my God. Gosh, I can just smoke this stuff all day, and just the aroma of it was, oh, it was just unreal. I mean, it was like, man, that was just all for me, you know. Some people don't like it. Uh, Relax Piper smoked some. He said it had a uh, chemical cherry flavor. Now, I don't know what that means. I have never had anything cherry that tastes like chemicals to me. Anyway, um, of course, now, I've, I'm, I've always ate food that was processed uh, sodas all the time just just synthetic crap you know so so my body don't even know the difference, the difference maybe maybe that's what it is I don't know but um uh, I do know that um to me the blood the cult blood red moon had a cherry flavor but it was more like a chocolate covered cherry flavor you know, which is a whole different, not a whole different cherry flavor, but it's a cherry flavor with that with that chocolatey twist to it, you know. You know, when you pop one of them things in your mouth and you chew it up, and you get that aroma coming out of your nose from the retro hell, you know, and and uh, and uh, that's what you get with Blood Red, or that's what I get with Blood Red Moon. Um, the other cherries are just, just like cherry, you know. That's, they, don't, they don't try to mix anything else. And you blend anything that, that gives it a chocolate flavor, I guess. But anyway, the first two um, uh, pounds I bought that stuff, it was fabulous. And I ran out, and the next two pounds I bought, that stuff would bite you harder than anything I've ever put in my mouth. It was horrible. I remember taking it, and I stoved all of it one time. I said, I got to do something with this stuff. And the stoving only took about a quarter to bite off and that's all it did you know and that was about as disappointed pointed as i could be about about um a, a tobacco about a year ago i heard somebody say they bought some in bulk and they were they were uh, reviewing it and they said yeah, that's pretty good well, they never mentioned tongue bite so I'm th i was thinking okay well maybe that batch that i got has all been all sold and 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 everybody's got this bad um, uh, memory of aromatics or cherry aromatics, you know, because they, they bit everybody that, that was buying this crap. And um, uh, maybe maybe now they got it straight, you know. And, and I, so anyway, I ordered two more pounds, one, one pound last night. So uh, I'm going to get that and I'm going to try it out. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was, uh, that'll be good to get back into some good uh, uh, lean berry cherry. The uh, the uh, um, Smoker's Pride chair, uh, Vanilla Cavendish is good to me, too. But it was kind of like just something that kind of helped take the place of the Laneberry Cherry. Everything has, has, has come second fiddle to that first two pounds that I bought. Especially the first time. If you watch my first video, I talk about this. This uh, first time I smelled that stuff. I was coming out of Lowe's. Oh, no, I was going into Lowe's and... Uh, I smelled this awesome aroma. It smelled like I was standing beside a 
strawberry Twinkie factory. It was the darndest thing, and I knew it was a pipe tobacco, and I, and I had smoked, you know, a pipe before, you know, and and gave up on it for a for a year or five years or something like that. I, yeah, yeah, I guess it was five years. I gave up on pipe smoking because short pipes were getting all in my nose, and I, and and I, and, I, and I figured out that I could I could smoke a a pipe if I had a long enough stem to keep that heavy bowl smoke out of my face. And um and uh, and, I, and I came back out and I said I gotta find out find out who's smoking that. And I smelled it again. I started looking around in the parking lot. I found it. Found a guy's truck. He was on the phone. I walked over to him and. And just stood there waiting for him to get over. He said, hey, he got off, he got off the phone. And, uh, he said, hey, can I help you? And I said, I said, hey, what kind of what kind of pipe tobacco is that you're smoking? <laughs> anyway, he said, you're a pipe smoker? I said, yeah, I, I like to dabble in it. And um, he said, well, go get your pipe and get in the truck. It was the darndest thing, y'all. It was, it was, it was, it was like a whole YTPC adventure, <laughs> you know. You know, if if you guys ever go to a uh, a pipe show, that'll be the, that'll be the feeling that you get. It's like a like you part of family as soon as you step in there, you know. And uh, I, I told the guys, no, I ain't got a pipe with me. I I ain't got to, I, at that time. I haven't get, ever I hadn't gotten to carry a pipe around with me. And um, and he said he said, well, let, let me get you some of this stuff. He had a whole pound. I guess maybe it was a it was a gallon Ziploc bag. Yeah, that, that, that would be a pound. And uh, and he pulls out this quart bag and loads that thing up and and uh, gave it to me and hadn't seen him since. Don't know who he was. Man, I want to thank him. But um, anyway, uh, a great experience. And uh, but uh, that, that second two pounds I bought was just man, that that broke my heart. That's for sure. Maybe they maybe they sold that out and they. They started rehydrating that stuff with the with, with the steel water instead of a uh, city water with the, with the chlorine in it. But do yourself some some of these experiments like that, you know. You just just soak it, uh, let it strain for a little while, and then sit it out. Let soak and wet, let it sit out and dry naturally, where 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 just the H two O is evaporating away. All the rest of the chemical compounds from the city water is staying on the tobacco. And um, and most of, most of that is chlorine. I the, the harmful ones are would be chlorine. Looks to me like, of course, who knows what they're putting? Yeah, you know, it could be fluoride. Who knows? You know what they're what they're doing to our water, really. Um, for years, I sm I drank uh, rainwater because we lived in the woods and we didn't we, did, we didn't have any uh, uh, running water or um, or uh, that sort of thing, and um, and we we collect the water off the roof, and um, and uh, water rainwater doesn't taste anything like any other water. That I know. It's it's very it's very clean water. Rainwater is. It's uh, you know the, the the water that you buy to drink in bottles, spring water and stuff like that. That it has a certain amount of minerals in it to give a softer a softer feel in your mouth or a softer taste you know well rainwater just doesn't have anything anything like that in it you know it's kind of like a you know it's just it's it's pure stuff you know besides the, besides the bird crap that gets on your roof or whatever you know You can puff this stuff as hard as you want. So do yourself some experiments. Um, uh, come up with a theory and then start experimenting and proving that theory. It kind of reminds me of a... I, I, I used to work for a lady. Uh, she's moved to New York now. Long Island, I think, is where she was from. And uh, she was... Um, a physicist professor at, at the college here in town, in East Carolina University, and uh, and um, 
I was asking her one time, I said, and I had this little idea in my mind. Where do where do these formulas originate? And I knew she had a doctorate, so see, if you go for your master's, you become kind of like a master in working things. When you go for a doctorate, you're actually you're actually learning how this thing works. What is what is the what is the actual beginnings of this mathematical equation, you know, that sort of thing. And I asked her a few times about this and, and uh, in, in one conversation until she understood where I was coming from. I wanted to know where formulas originate. <clears throat> and, um, you know, because you got to start from somewhere. And she and she eventually said, "Oh, okay, you won't go back that far." I said, "I said, yeah, yeah. I want to know where where they come from. We have all kinds of formulas. Okay, where they, where does this idea come from?" You know? She said, first of all, you start off with a theory. You just have some kind of off the wall theory, and you find out if it works with these formulas. And how you prove these formulas is you have another theory over here." that works with this mathematical equations and they, they work in unison with one another anyway so uh so yeah there's a lot of theories that i, I wonder i wonder sometime how about if the originating theory is wrong and you just came up with a formula to prove a wrong theory you know the theory of evolution you know uh, yes, things evolve. This bird's beak was straight. Now it's curved because they acquired a taste for this nut here that needed a curved beak to, to get into this nut. As far as a species changing into another species, there's no proof whatsoever of it. You know, and um, for and for a large part, you know, people start buying into this thing. You know, that that sort of thing. And uh, and and it went from uh, the evolution of of beings to uh, uh, to social evolution. We are getting better and better as a people. You know, we, we're just getting better and better. Acquired strengths from from parents to children is 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 how it goes, and everybody's getting smarter, smarter, and all this stuff. Nah, we got people now that don't even know where, which bathroom to use. You know. <laughs> acquire strengths from one to the other? Nah. You know, they wish they hadn't found it out. But, yeah, they found out that was that's not the case. And my heart goes out to these people that believe stuff that has no basis of truth. I mean, they just believe it because their professor said it and, and, they, and they go through their lives regurgitating what the professor said. You know, I would say it to my boys a lot of times. They would come home and say something. You know, I said I would say, "What do you think about that? What What does your logical mind think about that?" I said I would tell them. I said I said I hear a lot of stuff you're saying, but I mainly hear regurgitations from a professor. Is what I'm hearing, regurgitations from a professor, because I could question them about it, and sometimes they they'd stumble a little bit, you know, because they 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 didn't know the answer. You know, I'm like, wait a minute. Now you can't, you can't, you can't speak as if you have the full and total answer from this thing for this issue here that you're telling me is true. When you when 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 you're given a, a hard question about it and you and you and you stumble over yourself, you know. Anyway, my heart goes out to people that that. Uh, believe stuff a lot of stuff that comes out of the institutions and uh and they become disillusioned they they become depressed after finding out this you know i can't you know they get told oh you can do anything you can you can be anybody that you want to be and all this stuff all these grandioso ideas and 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 when the thug called Hard, cold facts steps out of dark alleyways and dragoons you into submission, beats the devil out of you. Them cold, hard facts don't have any mercy on you. Nah, 
No, they don't have any mercy on you. They're not going to say, oh, well, you know, believe what you want to. And we'll, we'll rub your head and all this stuff. You know, cold hard facts is going to beat you up. And these people, they, they, they get beat up by the cold hard facts and they go into depression. They all the rest of it. And they threaten, what, 300,000 people a year threaten to take their lives and shoot 30,000 actually do it, you know. There, 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 there's a disillusion that happened in their life, and uh, and uh, and it's not, and it's not good, you know. It's really not good. You know? Anyway, yeah, social Darwinism it's called. We're getting all better and better, you know. We're getting smarter and smarter. We are getting smarter and smarter, but this thing that 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 everybody is getting smarter and smarter. This family's children are smarter than their than their parents. That sort of thing. No, no. I know too many, too many children that have smart parents that are that, that their children are living in their basement in their, in their mom and dad's basement, and uh, playing video games and and and, and wasting away, you know, wasting away. Arrowhead, good stuff to me. Woo! Wow. I'm going to put a, a link to um, uh, Pipe Cottage's uh, video on, um, I forget what name it was, 10, 10 Blends that he liked or, or something like that. I'll put a link to that video. It was good. He was smoking, I think he was smoking a, a Rango Balkan Supreme, which to me is, is the ultimate Balkan blend. I mean, golly, that stuff is awesome. The power that it punches at you, you know. Just a flavor blast is unreal. You know, you think I'm a I'm an aromatic smoker, but when it comes to that stuff, geez, I mean, the flavor is so strong and good that, uh, man, it compares to every, every other flavor blast of aromatics that I got. Really? Anyway. I'll see you guys. Y'all have a good evening. All right, bye.